Hi everyone, it's Neve here. Today we're going to be exploring texture using texture paste and stencils. Uh, this is one of my favourite pieces I've ever created in my art journal and it was based on a design I saw by another YouTube artist, um, Inky Quill Adele, who's an Australian. Um, check out her YouTube page. Um, it was a mixed media canvas that she did a few years ago, um, which I decided I'd like to try and emulate. So I'm starting in my Use It Up journal. And you can see I've got a mess in the background. I was trying out all the new Dilutions paints, the Mushy Pea, Peony Blush, uh, Lilac. I think I've got some of the Vanilla Custard there too. Uh, is, and in the background was a stencil that I'll end up using later from Stencil Girl. So I decided that I'm still working on my drawing faces and I'm not very good at drawing turned faces so I decided to go to a fashion magazine and get a page um, with a beautiful profile picture. I found this one it was just perfect so I was trying to work out what direction to stick it down and I wanted to have sort of art turned. I glued it down using matte medium and now I'm getting my texture paste my modelling paste and putting it through my stencil. So this is the stencil that's in the background of the two pages with it, through the paint. I'm just putting it, the rest of it in my um, journal to use up. Then I'm putting the other one down. I really like this flower one. Again, it's a stencil girl design. And when I put it down, it immediately made me think of sort of a Marge Simpson beehive. So I was just making sure it's quite a thin layer of texture paste, but as soon as I did that reveal, I knew I was onto a winner with this one. Um, it just worked beautifully. Uh, so, drying off the texture paste with my heat gun. While I love using texture paste, it frustrates me because I have to wait for it to dry. I'm not a very patient artist. I want to keep working on things and that sometimes ends up with disasters happening. So at least if you heat the surface, you can see some of the areas turning a little bit more translucent, which means it's starting to dry. Texture paste has got a pretty good um, skin on it, so if you can at least get the top layer dry enough to the touch, it's still going to be wet underneath and you're going to have to wait for it to dry, but um, it gives you a bit of opportunity to sort of work around it and you're not going to smudge it too much. Because I was working on a double spread I just used my palette knife to make sure that the crease in the middle was um, didn't have too much texture paste in it so I can still fold it. And now I'm getting out um, a whole heap of different stencils. I think this is a Prima stencil, I'm not 100% sure. And using my blending tool to just put a bit of um, paint through the stencil. You could use a text, uh, stencil brush to do that too. I find using the um, blending tool, just a little bit of paint on the um, lid and, and rub it through. So this is a Prima stencil. Just adding that extra detail in the background to make it a little bit more interesting. So this is basically also me trying to busy my hands so I actually let that texture paste dry somewhat. Uh, you wouldn't have to do this I'm sure but I, I'm not very good at when I'm on to a, a, a roll with something I'm not very good at putting it aside and going on to something else. I tend to sort of work all in one one session. So now I'm just gessoing over the magazine image so I can add some extra colour. While I really liked the, the grey against the rest of the page because it was on a corner and you can see there's a bit missing. I had no idea how I was going to replicate that so I thought the easiest way to do that was for me to paint in my own piece of clothing. So I'm going in with the Mushy Pea Dilutions paint. Um, the good thing about the Dilutions paint, especially when you put it on as thin as you do with the blending tool, it does dry really really quickly which works well for me. This is a neat and tangled stencil and I'm using the Distress Oxides in similar colours to the background to sort of work in over the um, 
mushy green paint just to give some more texture. Now you can see I'm not actually cleaning my blending tool in between using different colours and I've got a little bit of the blue onto the pink pad. I'm not particularly worried about that. You can always, if you're worried about that, get a bit of a wet wipe and wipe off any excess ink. Because it was the distress ink didn't really stand up the way I wanted to, um, I decided to go back in with, oh no, I'm doing the hair. I decided to use the um, incredible inks to colour the hair. Um, so I'm just dropping the Dane, Jane Davenport incredible inks onto the hair in fresh air, violet syrup and um, fairy floss. Spraying the texture paste with some water just to help spread them out and they just looked amazing and they just sort of seeped into where they needed to go and going back and adding in a little bit extra of the, the violet syrup. I really like that sort of dusty purple colour. While I was doing that I was going to leave the face as is, but it's just the colour wasn't right, so I've decided to paint over it with gesso and recolour it um, so it blends in more with the background. I'm really glad that I did that. The inks in the background, um, not only do they look amazing, but they also uh, have got a smell to them. So the violet actually smells like violets. Every time I open up that page in my journal, I get this sort of whiff of perfume from it so it just really adds to that flower effect of the hair. I'm going through my Dino White Queen collage words to see if there's any words. I knew there was one about plants so I found the one that says if you don't like where you planted uproot and move. This is another one of my favourite techniques is when I gesso over a, a face or a portrait is to re-sketch in the lines so it kind of makes it more my piece of work um, and for some strange reason, I don't know why it is, but I think it suddenly made her look an um, awful lot younger than the original painting. Um, I've got a feeling it may have something to do with the eyelashes actually, but I, yeah. You know the way when you're working you just, you're feeling happier and happier as you do it because you know things are working well? So that's how I was feeling at this stage. Just going back in over the clothing with the paint just to add a bit more detail to it because I wasn't happy with those lines um, with the distress inks. It wasn't bright enough for me. Um, but I, I suppose the focus in this page is actually the hair and I just love the fact that that's so vibrant on the page. So just drying it off. Now at some stage here my camera actually dies so you don't see me do the final little judging of the page. When I was finished I decided it needed a quote and the one thing that kept coming through my hair is I wish I was a punk rocker with flowers in her hair because you know I was around in the early 200s when 200s 2000s when that was popular. I went back in with some black on the page with a stencil and it just really popped all the background out for some reason. I really liked it. You can also see my um, pad was dirty. I think I got some gel medium on it so I was just rubbing it with some um, wet wipe just to get rid of it. I was looking at my um, scribble slips to use on the page to colour the image and I decided that they were too much so I went back in with my Distress Oxides to colour um, and just like applying makeup I tend to do it with my fingers. I did put the red on the lips and that just didn't work. Um, I was cleaning it up with some water, but I decided to actually take it off and colour it with a different colour. And that was a good thing about having a gessoed image, that you could do that and remove the colour. You can see in the hair I've um, splattered over some gold Heidi Shine, just to tie the whole piece together. And put in the quotes using the Tim Holtz foam stamps and uh, black archival ink. So this is my girl with flowers in her hair. I hope you enjoyed the process and I'd love to see what you do with it. See you next time. Thanks for subscribing.